All right, guys, we got big news. First of all, Cardano, which many of you are interested in, and uh, Polygon may not be securities. We have a bill that might uh, have many states hold Bitcoin in their treasuries, which could be very, very big for the bull run. And we also have an update on the Mt. Gox distribution status. So right now, um, the SEC has backed off on Polygon and Matic. Now, I already reported yesterday that they backed off on Solana, but now it seems like they've backed off on Polygon and Matic as well, which is very, very good. I think they'll back off on other coins. So they backed off on claiming ADA, Matic, and Solana are securities. And this is, of course, off the Binance case. They amended the Binance case because remember, the judge determined that Binance was not a security on the secondary market. So the SEC voluntarily removed Cardano and Matic on the docket either. Yesterday, I only reported that they uh, removed Solana, but they removed others, and there's more coins to probably follow. Remember, when they originally sued Binance, they included BNB, uh, BUSD, Solana, Cardano, Polygon, Cosmos, Sand, Mana, and Axie Infinity. Now, BNB is obviously off the docket because the judge ruled against them. Solana's off the docket. Cardano's off the docket. Polygon is off the docket. So if you're on these other coins like uh, Atom, Sand, Mana, AXS, they might be off the docket as well. So bit by bit, the SEC has lost, and now they're taking all these coins off the uh, security bucket. And obviously that's because of the shifting views on crypto in the US. I think even Gary Ginsler sees the writing on the wall. He sees that like both parties are basically against his agenda. He's only got a couple of allies like Elizabeth Warren, but that's not gonna be able to stand against the horde of people that are pro crypto. Um, I think Kamala Harris is probably going to redefine uh, the Democrats position on crypto after urging from Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and many others. And obviously, like, even more important, her big donors, you know, the people that are funding her, want her to take a much more pro-crypto position, so much that they are uh, lobbying permissionless to have her speak at the conference. So she's looking at those big money donors, and she's thinking, yeah, you know what, I should probably just... Uh, give up this crusade against crypto because it's bad for my electoral chances. And obviously my big money donors might actually pull away from me if I don't agree to this demand. Because remember, this is not one of those, um, uh, this is not one of those issues where she would, if you change his position, she would actually lose a lot of voters. It's not like the Republicans in abortion where they would lose all like the hardcore religious people if they um, basically aborted that position and was more pro, like, you know, pro light, uh, pro choice. Whereas um, crypto, like, if you aborted the position where you're anti crypto, you wouldn't actually lose any uh, voters. You would probably, like, pull in some of the middle people that are pro crypto, but more left leaning on anything else. And that would definitely make people like Michael Saylor more happy because he is definitely, like, left leaning on all the social issues, but he's obviously very pro crypto. So that's actually a winning strategy from them. So I do think like Kamala Harris being younger and having like the donors favor crypto and having like the democratic leaders favor crypto will actually come out in favor of crypto sooner rather than later for her electoral chances. Um, Senator Loomis has actually an idea that would let states hold BTC in their reserves. And it is a draft bill. I do think with the direction this is going right now, this has a very, very good chance to go through the House and the Senate and be signed. Maybe not before the election, but definitely after the election. It'll have to uh, really count on how the election goes. But seeing like how many Democratic senators and House reps actually side with Republicans on pro-crypto issues, I think this can go um, through regardless. And I do not think uh, after their foobar of vetoing the last bill, I don't think they'll veto this one. The bill is called Boosting Innovation, Technology, and Competitiveness Through Optimized Investment Nationwide Act of 2024, or shorthand, the Bitcoin Act of 2024. We're going to remember this as the Bitcoin Act of 2024. States can voluntarily participate in storing Bitcoin holdings in the reserve, according to the draft version of the bill. Cynthia, uh, Senator Cynthia Loomis' bill lays out a pathway for U.S. to hold Bitcoin and gives states the option to do so as well, according to a draft copy obtained by the block. The bill is called Boosting Innovation, Technology, and Competitiveness Through Optimized Investment Nationwide Act of 2024, shorthand, or Bitcoin Act of 2024, according to a draft version. 
Bitcoin as a decentralized and scarce digital uh, asset offers unique properties that complement existing national reserves, strengthening the position of the United States dollar in the global financial system, according to a copy of the draft version of the bill. The bill creates a Bitcoin purchase program that will buy no more than 200,000 Bitcoin a year over a five-year period. So not quite as bullish of R as RFKs, but kind of in the same line of thought. And the main thing is like, it will allow individual states to hold uh, Bitcoin in their treasury, which would be really, really big. So this is actually obviously like making crypto even more of a hot button issue. Very um, bullish, and I definitely hope this goes through. I personally think this will probably go through given some time. It may not go through the first time. They might want to revise it. But I do actually think that it will eventually go through. Um, Harris's team has actually been reaching out to crypto industries and companies. So I think she's going to be a lot more open to crypto than Biden was because she wants her own electoral chances to go up. And a comment about the Mt. Gox distribution right now. 41% of all the Mt. Gox coins are distributed, 41.5. They still have the other 58.5% to go. The drawdown has been somewhat mild. And I believe the rest of the drawdown will be mild as well. It's like in this 66, 67K area. I think the drawdown will probably reach the 63, 62K area. But based on what I'm seeing right now, that's probably going to be the bottom of it. I don't think we're going to get to like 52 or 48, maybe upper 50s. That would be my guess uh, at, the le um, at the most. But it looks like most of those people are actually holding, which is very, very good news for us. So based on the fact that we've gotten like X percentage out and people haven't sold, um, I can project like the rest of the 59% and how much they kind of will sell, um, expecting the same behavior from the last batch as the first batch. Some of you might not agree with that, but I don't really see how else you could actually project it. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button, and I will see you guys later.